Welcome back to Ask the Energy Advisor. I'm your energy advisor, Brian Hawk, with Noble REMC. Uh, can you believe it's been a year since we shot our heat pump water heater video? Um, I can't. Uh, really, this has been one of the mo more popular videos that we've done. It's been, I think, the most engaged responses that we've ever had. So, uh, and with that, we normally try and answer. If we get a, a question that's really part of something we talked about, something that we really feel somebody's searching for, we'll do our best to answer that. So if you've asked us a question in the past and we haven't answered it and you're looking for that love and feeling and we didn't provide, put her back on here, we'll get to it. Um, just with that, I'm gonna go through here and read just a few of these and, and I've got some notes written down where we've gone through some of them already, but I thought it'd be nice to share some of these. Um, I live in Phoenix, this would be great in my garage as it may lower the temperature a bit. Uh, since it's a heat pump, wouldn't it be better to have it located in the attic where there's a lot of heat year round or use a split system with the heat pump located in the attic? Uh, let's see. To be called a heat pump, the unit should have a reversing valve part, which it doesn't have. Sneaky. Here's a good one. What it boils down to is, I see what you did there. Did you? Another good one. My water heater sits in the corner of the bedroom. Does it like what it sees? So really, you know, just to address, we'll go with that first one. It shouldn't be called a heat pump because it doesn't have a reversing valve. I think we actually addressed this in the video. I called it a half ton air conditioner sitting on top. You're right. It does not have a reversing valve. It is not a true heat pump um, per se. Uh, it is pumping heat. So if we want to call it a heat pump, I guess we will. But um, it literally is just cooling the air around it, taking the heat from the air around it, putting it in the refrigerant around the tank. We, we talked about that. Um, some of the things, you know, the, the garage versus the attic versus a basement versus living space. Um, we handle A.O. Smith. Uh, those were the heaters in the videos. And their parameters are 45 degrees on the cool side, 120 degrees on the hot side. So we are in Northeast Indiana, uh, electric cooperative in Northeast Indiana. So everything we talk about is you know really going to pertain to what we see. Um, I'm not a huge fan of garage application on this water heater just because it's very easy to get your garage below 45 degree ambient temperature around here. Um, if you're okay with suffering the loss of, you know, one to three months out of the year, your heat pump water heater is going to actually operate as just a standard electric water heater, then I'm fine with that. Uh, the, the opposite of that is, you know, putting it in an attic. If you completely seal your attic and you've got a conditioned attic, where you're not gonna allow that attic to get over 120 degrees and you're going to have your um, ductwork sealed and you don't have a lot of cellulose where it can uh, become airborne, then it's probably not a bad idea there either. Being in Northeast Indiana, where we don't get that heat. You know, what we're gonna get in the summertime, we're gonna lose in the wintertime. So being a heat driven climate, there's really no need to put it in the attic here, but if you have a clean attic and it's warm in your climate, as long as you can keep it below 120, A.O. Smith says it should work. Um, some of the other things we've had, uh, really one of the big ones, actually there was one on here about using it for radiant floor heating. Not really going to be a good candidate for that. Um, being only a half ton of air conditioning, you've only got 16,000 BTUs available through the heat pump. Most radiant floor heating, you know, opportunities, they're looking, you know, on a, on a median size home, you're probably in the two and a half to three ton range. So um, we'll just call it 36,000 BTU. So you can see we're grossly underrated for that. This thing's gonna run nonstop, not going to satisfy in heat pump mode. It's gonna kick into electric mode and still run nonstop. So it's, it's just going to cost you a lot of money to heat with an electric water heater, period. Um, some of the other things we've had, uh, actual losses in the space that it's in. I'm a big fan of putting this thing in the basement. That's just, that's where I think they were, they'll really shine in our climate. Um, 
if you happen to have a, a large laundry or a large mechanical room in your living space, you're on a crawl space or a slab, and you decide you want to take a chance on this, what's the real cost loss by having this in the space that it's in? You know, we had a lot of questions about um, really causing extra load on the heating system in the house. Um, we're going to run this out at 6,000 BTUs. I am not a spreadsheet guy. I don't understand how to build a spreadsheet. My numbers are all hand drafted, so uh, bear with me. Everything is going to be easy because that's the way I like it. Um, 6,000 BTUs, we're going to do that across the board for the heat pump water heater. We're going to do it for a propane furnace. We're going to do it for an electric baseboard or electric furnace, and then an electric water heater. So for that 6,000 BTUs of water heating capacity, that's going to cost you six cents an hour with your heat pump water heater. What that same 6,000 BTUs costs you with a uh, propane furnace, you've got 92,000 BTUs available per gallon of propane. I calculated this at $1.85 per gallon and a 96% efficient furnace. So that same 6,000 BTUs of heat is going to cost you 13 cents electric baseboard or electric uh, resistance furnace, uh, that same 6,000 BTUs is going to cost you 18 cents. And an electric water heater, we're going up to 4,500 watts with that element on an electric water heater. So that same 6,000 BTUs is going to cost you um, 45 cents an hour to operate. So really what we're looking at, actually I broke that one down per hour, um, just straight electric resistance. So. What we're looking at uh, is if we take that heat pump water heater and compare it to an electric resistance water heater, we've got a net gain of 39 cents per hour. So we've got 39 cents to play with here where we can um, figure out how that's going to work against our propane furnace. So we take that 39 cents, subtract a 13 cents for the LP furnace, and we still gain 26 cents per hour for operational costs. Um, take that to an electric water heater, or I'm sorry, to the electric baseboard, take that 39 cents, subtract the 18, and we've still gained 21 cents per hour. So you can see the offset of that 600 watt AC or heat pump sitting on top of that water heater versus a 4,500 watt element in a, an electric water heater. There's real substantial savings right there that will offset your heating and cooling or your heating costs um, with a propane furnace or electric resistance of, or, of some sort. I did not calculate a heat pump uh, because they range so far in efficiencies and, and what they'll do for you. These two numbers are pretty solid. They're very easy to calculate. I'm not that smart. So it really is, um, as you can see, you get a net gain by installing this heat pump water heater. Really, no matter where you install it, except for the garage. You know, there's always that potential in our climate or in cold climates that this thing is going to fall between, below 45 degrees and it'll revert to electric element only. Still gonna heat your hot water, you're just losing some of that efficiency. Um, had some real good following from uh, our friends down under. Uh, people down in Australia, we had a gentleman uh, wrote in and could not believe that we take 17 minute showers up here. Uh, it says he works construction and, He's never been so dirty that it's taken 17 minutes to get himself clean. So I uh, totally get that. I work construction for 20 years and I don't take 17 minute showers. That's just the standard that A.O. Smith uses in their uh, literature and on their webpage. So it is rated for 17 minute showers. If you want to take a two and a half minute showers and get all your bits clean, hey, it'll do the job. It's, it's no harm, no foul there. Uh, and we do appreciate you commenting. That, that really made our day when we read this one. A um, couple conspiracy theories, you know, I want to address. We had some people write in and say how convenient it is. Oh, the one was um, he saw I saw what we did there. I'm still not sure what that one was. Uh, the X Files tune went through my head when I read it. So, um, but I'm assuming it has to do with being an electric company and selling electric water heaters or heat pump water heaters. A couple of people commented on the actual output cost of the heat pump water heater. It is about three times more expensive than a traditional electric water heater. Um, as we talked about in the first video, those numbers come together pretty quickly on efficiencies when you <clears throat> calculate the efficiencies versus the straight up electric water heater. Uh, where we're at, uh, we utilize Power Moves rebates. So if you bought this water heater from us today, we have a $600 rebate that we have the ability to take off at the point of sale. So we're, we're taking a big chunk off of it right there. 
Now the nice thing about this is we buy them at X dollar, we sell them at this dollar. So we're not making any money off of them. In fact, we lose money on them just to try and get them in people's homes. Uh, being an electric company, yes, we would rather have you have an electric water heater than a gas water heater. Who wouldn't? So that's, uh, as far as conspiracy theories, that's about as far as it goes. I'm in my office, so I can't turn into the cigarette smoking man, but um, it really does. The reason we like electric water heaters is very clean load. Uh, heat pump water heaters, they save you money, they save us money. We get billed on KW demand and we get billed on kilowatt hour consumption. Across the board, we pass on kilowatt hour consumption. We do not pass on kilowatt hour demand or kilowatt demand to our residential members. So every KW that we drop off of our system, it saves us money. And these have a tendency, I put one in my home, I've been tracking it. I've dropped between two and a half to three KW off of my monthly demand since I put that water heater in, in February of last year. If, yeah, of last year. So that's why we like them so much. Um, and that leads me to uh, really, we talked about the $600 power moves rebate. Um, the federal government just came out end of 21, end of 22, they came out with the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say I like it. I agree with it, disagree with it. It just is what it is at this point. Um, they offer a lot of money to upgrade to heat pump technology. So there's potential there. Talk to your accountant. I'll always say talk to your accountant. Unfortunately, our friends down under, I'm not going to apply to you, but um, talk to your accountant. They, they are saying that there's going to be up to $1,750 towards a heat pump uh, water heater install. So there's potential, especially in our area with the rebates in your area, they're more than likely going to be rebates also. Uh, this still falls under the federal tax credit. Uh, I believe it's a $300 federal tax credit that was started in 06. So awful lot of money to upgrade to a heat pump water heater. Um, again, if you're on a slab home, crawl space home, and the only place you have to put it in is in your living area, I'm not sure it's going to be what you're looking for. Um, if you can tolerate a little noise, I don't think you'll suffer much from the comfort as far as the, the heat gain that it gets and puts in the water. Um, you're going to have a little chill in the area, but it is not overcomable. So uh, with that, Thank you. We really appreciate you watching our videos. We appreciate even more your comments and your questions. We, we really look forward to answering everything we can. Uh, a lot of them make us smile, you know, so keep it up. We really appreciate it. And thanks again. Again, this is Brian Hawk, your energy advisor for Noble REMC.